Hey y'all, it's another video with Ashley Dawn. I haven't decided, I might change my name instead of getting real, I might change my name to something else. So if you have any ideas, please put them below, message me, whatever. Because I think the getting real, I'm getting some people commenting on my videos that I don't really like and I wonder if it's because of the getting real part. Because the people, they're like, spam accounts and they really shouldn't be on my account anyway I think the getting real is bringing them anyway if you have an idea of a new name I was gonna do uh, something but then I looked it up and it's connected to somebody that I don't like um, a celebrity that I don't like so I'm not gonna do that <laughs> but I am thinking about changing the name anyway it's another getting real with Ashley John this one is super fun this one is a request from a very good friend of mine and he asked me if I would do a video on discipleship and how you can't have discipleship without discipline. And he gave me the idea and I was like, oh, that's good. Yes, totally going to do that. So let's jump right into it. Being a disciple of Jesus is not easy. Being a believer is Anybody can believe in Jesus. Satan believes in Jesus, right? Anybody can. But being a disciple is the hard part. Wearing a cross around your neck don't make you a disciple. Don't really make you a believer either. It just makes you a person that's wearing some jewelry. Wearing a scripture on your wrist doesn't necessarily make you a disciple. Maybe you like that scripture for a reason other than what it's meant for. To be a disciple means to be trained under the teaching of Jesus. You look at the disciples, right? And you look at their lives. They gave up everything they had to follow Jesus. How many of us, let's just talk about Americans, for instance. I know there are some people all over the world that watch my videos. Well, let's just talk about America, right? How many of us have given up our homes, our lives to follow Jesus? None of us, right? It's legal to worship God right now. And it's legal to go to, go to a church and sing praises to God, to wear a cross around your neck, to carry a Bible with you. It's getting harder and harder, especially in schools um, and colleges and places like that. But even in colleges, there's, you know, Chi Alpha and there's different sororities and fraternities that are faith-based and scripture-based. So when you look at that and you're like, okay, we really haven't given up, so to speak, anything to be a Christ follower, to be a disciple. Look at the disciples in the Bible. They, they literally gave up everything, but they still did it. The cost was worth it. You know, a lot of people say count the cost. When you go to buy something, you got to count up your money to see if you can afford it. Well, if you're going to follow God, if you're going to follow Jesus, you should count up your life and see if it's worth it to you to spend it on that or not. To me, it is. Granted, like I said, I haven't necessarily given up anything in America because there are churches on every corner. I work for a church. I go to different churches. And so I really haven't had to give up anything. I haven't had to hide underground to read a Bible like I know they do, you know, in different places. I haven't had to, I know that some places you're not allowed to have a Bible. So people rip out pages and they'll fold a page of the Bible and they'll hold on to it and they'll memorize it and then they'll switch with somebody else. If you follow Francis Chan, he's an awesome speaker and preacher and teacher. He uh, talks about that a lot. The in other countries, how special a Bible is. You know, in America, how many of us have 20 of them sitting in our library, in our study, in our um, bookshelf, dusty, that we don't even open? And yet people are risking their lives to have one page of the Bible in other countries. Count the cost. What is it worth it to you? What's it worth to you? When you go to buy a house, you have to get approved for a loan. You gotta count the cost. Okay, how much is this thing gonna cost me? You get a new car, how much is this thing gonna cost me? Dave Ramsey would tell you to drive your old car until it don't run no more. Save your money, don't get a payment. And that's, you know, between you and God, you live your own life, I live mine. But 
you got to count the cost. You want to follow Jesus, it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be the hardest thing you ever had to do because it's going to take your flesh and it's going to kill it. Not necessarily you, maybe, but not necessarily. But your selfishness, your pride, your ego, wanting your own way instead of God's, right? When I, I mean, I have followed Jesus my whole life, but the longer you follow Jesus, it's like the new level you go to right? This side of heaven, you'll, you'll never be fully, uh, finished. You'll, you'll never be complete this side of heaven, but every day you're learning more. Hopefully every year you're learning more. Hopefully every season you're learning more, hopefully. And so for me, you know, I look back to 20 year old Ashley Dawn and she wasn't as close to Jesus as she is now. I look back to 10-year-old Ashley Dawn. She wasn't as close to Jesus as she is now. I look back to little three-year-old Ashley Dawn singing Sunday school songs at church. Obviously, she wasn't as close to God as I am now. There's, a, you know, babies. Babies drink from their mother or they drink formula or a bottle. Well, they get to a point around one year mark where they start eating real food, where they start eating people food. They can't eat everything because they don't have a full set of teeth, so you can't be giving them, you know, a big old hunk of steak or something. But as they grow, as their bodies mature, as they start getting their, their teeth, they can eat more. It's the same thing with the Word of God. The more time you spend in it, the more you'll understand it. The more you understand it, the more you'll live it. The more you live it, the closer you will be to Jesus, the more of a disciple you will be. And so when you look at it and you think, okay, Ashley Dawn, you say being a disciple is hard. Yeah, it's going to be the hardest thing that you've ever done in your life. Okay, you get into a relationship. Well, the Bible is very clear on what a relationship is. It's very clear on what a relationship should and shouldn't be in a biblical-based relationship. You can't be jumping from bed to bed if you're following Christ. I know some people do, and Listen, that's between them and God. No judgment. They have to answer to God for their own things. But I'm just saying, it's hard. It's hard not to give in to the flesh. It's hard not to turn on that movie that you know you shouldn't be watching. It's hard not to click on that link that you know you shouldn't click on. It's hard when, you know, your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whoever is at your house and, you know, you're kissing and things are getting hot and heavy and you know that you need to shut that door and you need to, you know, tell them they need to go home like this ain't happening. But you don't. I know. It's hard. But what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to let go of so that you can get as close to Christ as possible? What are you willing to say, you know what, God? I want what you have for me more than I want what I want for myself. Okay? You want to overeat. But you know that your body is your temple. And it's God's temple, and you know that you need to honor it, and so you stop eating. That that may be a temptation for you. Maybe, uh, you know, porn is a temptation. Maybe it's not porn. Maybe it's actual, you know, having a relationship, having sex, having intimacy with someone. Maybe that's a struggle for you, and, and maybe I have some friends that have said, you know, I love Jesus, but I, I'm struggling with some temptation, some sexual temptation. And they try really hard, and sometimes they do great, and sometimes they fail. I have friends that are walking through uh, alcohol and drug addiction, and they're, you know, detoxing, and they're trying to get away from it, but sometimes it's hard. I get it. The flesh is tempting. I get it. My dad used to say all the time, sin wouldn't, if nobody would sin if it wasn't fun, right? The thing, and Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. It's a thorn in my flesh. I don't want to do this thing, but I keep doing it. I don't want to think this thought, but I keep thinking it. What is wrong with me? I want to honor my boyfriend. I want to honor my girlfriend, but, you know, we get to kissing and it just gets too hot and heavy and we can't stop. Well, maybe you need to put some boundaries. Maybe you need to, you know, pray and give it to God. Maybe you need to get a counselor. Maybe you need to get a mentor. Maybe you need to, you know, talk to somebody that has done it the way that you want to do it. And I'm not saying everybody has to live their life the way that I do. Again, I try to encourage, I share my life. I'm a professional at my life. The Word of God will convict you as 
the Holy Spirit sees fit. I don't need to convict you. I don't need to condemn you. I don't need to judge you. I don't need to point my finger at you and tell you what you need to do and what you don't need to do. However, if you ask me what the Bible says, I'll tell you. If you ask me how I live my life, I'll tell you. I'm not perfect. I mess up too. I'm just like everybody else. My temptations are going to be different than your temptations. Your temptations are going to be different than mine. Some I have a handle on. Some I'm struggling with. It's like that for everybody. Nobody's perfect. But to be a disciple every single day, you have to pick up the cross of Jesus Christ and walk. Now that cross is heavy. It's heavy. It's not easy. You don't just wake up in the morning and I'm going to do whatever I want to do. Woo! this person off because they cut me in traffic. I'm going to cuss this person out. I'm going to yell at this person. I'm going to steal from this person. I'm going to lie to this person. I'm going to take advantage of this person. No, I actually can't do none of those things. You wake up and you say, God, here's my day. I give you my day. I give you my life. Have your way. Show me what you want for me. Help me pick up this cross. Help me walk according to your design for me. Help me to do what you have called me to do. It's going to be hard, but I need your help. Every single day, you surrender your will to his will. You say, God, I really like this guy, but if it's not your will, take him away. God, I really like this girl, but if it's not your will, take her away. Obviously, if it's your husband or your wife, you can't be praying that prayer um, because obviously you married them and you should do the best that you can and go to counseling, maybe get a mentor, maybe read the Bible together, pray, sign up for a Bible study together. I do not encourage divorce. However, in the same token, I do not encourage rushing into a marriage either. My story is that I did rush into a marriage. I was uh, very naive and very trusting and I believed uh, some people that I shouldn't believe, have believed, and I got married. Well, I got engaged after three months of not even knowing this person. I thought I knew them, but I didn't. So I encourage waiting to know that person. I encourage you to build a friendship. When I think about discipleship, I think about, I want to be best friends with Jesus. I want to be so close to his side that if I do something that offends him, he will tell me no, and I will listen. I don't want to be so far off from him that he tells me no, and I'm like, huh? What? I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Can you say it a little louder, Jesus? I didn't hear you. I don't I don't want to be far away from him. I want to be close so that even if he's whispering, I can hear it. If he whispers no, yes, sir, I'm not going to do it. If he whispers yes, yes, sir, I'll do it right now. I want to be close to him. It's the same, you know, with a relationship. If you're not close to that person, if you don't know that person, how can you be in a relationship with them? Well, how can you be in a relationship with Jesus if you don't know him, if you don't spend time with him, if you don't read your Bible, if you don't pray and talk to him? Praying is just talking to Jesus. It doesn't got to be fancy. It doesn't got to be, you know, all these, these, and thou's. Hallelujah. No, it doesn't have to be that. Jesus tore the veil. We don't have to go to a high priest to, to get blessings. We don't have to go to a high priest to get prayer. We go right to the source. We go right to Jesus. And so, with all that to say, are we going to Jesus? Are we spending time with him? Are we getting to know his desires for us? Or are we waking up in the morning and doing whatever we want? This morning, I woke up. I had some awesome quiet time with Jesus. And, and I'm not saying this to brag because there ain't nothing that I have to brag about. Except Jesus isn't awesome. But I woke up, I had quiet time, I read my devotionals, I prayed, I read my Bible, listened to some worship music, and then I worked out. When you wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, the first thing, unless you're like a hardcore bodybuilder or like fitness person, most people don't wake up and think, I'm going to work out. I'm going to stretch my muscles in a way that's going to cause them pain. I know they're going to grow, but it's going to cause them pain. For the most part, I don't know anybody that wakes up in the morning and that says, I want my muscles to hurt. I want to do so many squats that my legs are jello. I want to do so many, uh, 
I don't know what the thing with the bar that you bench press, is that it? Yeah. I wanna do so many of those that my arms feel like they're gonna fall off. I don't know many people that think that in the morning, but if you do it, you'll see results. Your body will start looking different. You'll start getting strength. I can tell you when I first started working out, I mean, I used to do weight training in high school and I trained with all the wrestlers and stuff, but um, if, like when I first started working out, I barely could lift anything like anything heavy. I could leg press a good bit, but I barely could lift anything super duper heavy. Now, the more I work out, the more I can lift. It is the same thing with discipleship. It hurts. It's going against your flesh. You're building spiritual muscles and it hurts. And sometimes you feel like you can't go on, but if you keep going on, your muscles will get bigger. Your spiritual muscles will get bigger. And then when life knocks you down, and you're a disciple, you understand that all you gotta do is reach out your hand and God will lift you back up. And then your spiritual muscles are strong so you can get through a lot more than you could when they weren't strong. Being a disciple, yes, it's for God. You know, we wanna honor God. We wanna do what he calls us to do, but it's also for us. Being disciplined enough to work out blesses our body, we'll be healthier. We'll be, we'll be stronger. Being disciplined not to overeat blesses us because we won't get sick and diabetes and heart problems. Being disciplined in school blesses you because you get a good grade. Maybe you get a good job. Being disciplined with waking up at the same time every day gives you more of the daytime. Being disciplined is a blessing, but how many of us want discipline? I can look back to uh, my childhood and some of y'all that are watching this might not like it and that's your opinion. I believe in whoopings. I believe in spanking. I believe that the Bible says spare the rod, spoil the child and there's a lot of people walking around doing a lot of bad things that should have got some butt whoopings in their life. And I can tell you I had about five butt whoopings where I got my little switch, my little paddle out, have my name on it and my daddy would say go get your paddle ash. That wasn't a good choice. You're, you gotta have consequences so you'll learn. It's gonna hurt me more than it hurts you. And I got about five of them. And I can tell you what they were for and I can tell you that was the first and last time I ever did those things. Why? Because I understood that when I was disciplined, it was for my own good. I understood that the pain that I felt from getting swatted on the hind end with a switch, a palm frond without the leaves, was gonna hurt a lot less than if I made that choice and I did that thing. One of the times I got swatted, I ran out in front of a car when my mom told me not to. And my dad talked to me and he said, Ash, if I don't do this, you're not gonna understand. So I'm gonna whoop your butt and you're gonna remember this pain when your mom tells you, she hollers at you and she says, don't run out in the street. And when you think of this pain, I want you to think of the fact that that car could have hit you and ran over you and you'd be in a lot more pain. You might even die. And it, it, it clicked. And I realized when your mom tells you not to run out in the middle of the road, you probably shouldn't do that. Discipline is for our good. It hurts at the moment, but it's for our good. I believe in butt whoopings. I believe in consequences. I believe in timeouts. If they work, if they don't work, well, have a harsher punishment. Look at our prison system. Maybe, just maybe, if some of those people that are in prison, when they were little, had some authority in their house, and they had some consequences, and they had some butt whoopings, and they felt a little bit of pain in their life, not necessarily be because of life, because I know a lot of them grew up without fathers and grew up in abusive homes, and a lot of them, you know, it's a mental thing too. But I will say, some people don't know better because nobody's ever taught them. They never got a whooping. I know better. My mom and daddy, Bobby and Michelle, taught me right from wrong. They didn't play. And guess what? I've never been in jail. Guess what? I've had a really good life. I did go to the principal's office a time or two, but that was because I was defending myself. I do believe in self-defense. And if a boy is poking me or touching me where he shouldn't be touching me, I'm gonna punch him in the face. 
I do not um, encourage violence, but I do encourage you to defend yourself. Anyway, back to the thing. You can't be a disciple without being disciplined. It hurts at the moment, but it's worth it. Let God discipline you. Let God discipline you. Because if you don't, you're going to regret it a, a lot. So, I love y'all. More importantly, a God loves you. And he has great, great plans for you. I just want to encourage you. You are seen, celebrated, and loved. And I'll catch you in my next one. Bye, y'all.